Please remain standing for the drumming in of the Eagle Staffs. Honored guests, family and friends, good morning. My name is Chief Warrant Officer Stephen Wall, and it will be my honor to serve as your Master of Ceremonies for today's event. I ask everyone in attendance to please turn off their cellular phones and other personal communication devices during the ceremony. I now ask you please stand, if you are able, for Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, the Honorable Anita Neville. On behalf of the Manitoba Association of Chiefs of Police, I welcome you all to the 2023 Manitoba Police and Peace Officers Memorial Service. This memorial, which honors the lives of the fallen members of all law enforcement agencies in Manitoba, is held every year on the last Sunday in September. It is with deep sadness that we have experienced yet another loss just two days ago with the tragic passing of Constable Frederick Rick O'Brien, who was killed in the line of duty in Coquilliam, British Columbia. A member of the Ridge Meadows RCMP, Constable O'Brien was assisting with the execution of a search warrant at a residence in Coquilliam and was critically injured. Despite life-saving efforts by emergency responders, Constable O'Brien succumbed to his injuries. Our deepest sympathies are with those who are actively grieving his loss at this time, his friends, his family, and all those within the RCMP. We also think of the officers who were injured in the same incident. We hope and pray for their full recovery. Their bravery, sacrifice, and commitment 
demonstrated by all who are remembered with honor is why we gather today as one. I would like to begin the service by inviting Winnipeg Police Choir member Alana Penner uh, to come forward to perform our national anthem. If you are able, I would ask that you remain standing for the singing of Old Canada. Hooray! Attention! seated. Today, every province and territory in Canada is gathering together and holding a similar event from coast to coast to coast. These ceremonies unite us in our grief and allow us to honor all those who lost their lives in the service to Canadians over these last 150 plus years. I would now ask Chaplain Sergeant Greg Weeb to deliver the opening prayers. As we take a moment to remember those who have gone before us, I invite you to draw from the various faith traditions with which you are familiar and that are represented in this gathering. For those who do not embrace a faith background, please use this moment to focus your thoughts on the reason why we join together today. Together, let us find common ground in our gratitude and remembrance. For those of you who are able, please remove headdress. Father God, we pray for peace that surpasses all understanding as we remember those who have paid the ultimate price, especially those who are grieving the most recent loss of Constable O'Brien. Give us the strength to share in this tribute, to mourn by honoring each and every life here in Manitoba and across this country. In your name we pray, amen. You may replace headdress. I would now like to welcome our Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, Her Honor, the Honorable Anita Neville to the podium. Good morning, friends, families, those of you who are protectors of peace, and fellow Manitobans, welcome to this ceremony of remembrance and indeed of gratitude. As Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, 
I acknowledge that we are gathered on Treaty One land and in the heartland of the Red River Métis, the province we love and that police and peace officers make secure is the ancestral and the present day home of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Dakota, the Dene, Métis and Inuit peoples. Together we each have a part to play in building, understanding, goodwill, healing and opportunity for all in this truly beautiful province. As Manitobans and as Canadians, we long to live in safe communities with high levels of public trust and cooperation. We want to live in a province and a nation where disagreements are resolved through discussion, where lives and valuables are secure, and where rules designed to keep society functioning, functioning fairly and safely are respected by all. However, human nature being the way it is, that ideal won't come to life on its own. We require a legal system enforced by dedicated professionals to protect the lives and the rights of all Canadians. Today across Canada, we remember the men and women who have lost their lives in service of that vision while protecting their communities as police and as peace officers. This annual Memorial Day was established in, 1988, in 1998 in Canada. Each September since then, we have gathered to pay tribute to the brave women and men who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the safety of others. And as we bow our heads to those lost, we also give thanks to who, all who serve in this capacity. Theirs is a life of long and odd hours, serving in all weather, in all conditions, responding to emergencies, and working with the knowledge that a deadly danger can emerge out of the most innocent of moments. Their dedication make the people of our province and our country safer and better, able to enjoy all the benefits conferred by life in Canada. Whether you work in policing, in corrections, as a conservation officer, or in any capacity as police officer or peace officer, as Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, and as the representative of His Majesty King Charles, I thank you for your dedication to your country and indeed to your fellow Canadians. Thank you all. Merci. Make rich. Unfortunately, Premier Heather Stephenson, who had hoped to attend today, has sent her apologies. So, I will now invite the Honorable Calvin Gertson, Minister of Justice and Attorney General, to deliver a message on behalf of the provincial government. Your Honor, Your Worship, members of law enforcement, I'm pleased to be joined today with officials from the Manitoba Department of Justice. I appreciate the notes that they've prepared for me, but if they would forgive me, I would like to speak a little bit from the heart today. Constable O'Brien lost his life in British Columbia this week and joins a growing list, a much too fast growing list of law enforcement who've lost their life in the line of duty. As elected officials, we look to find reason and we look to find words to provide in times like this, but there's a reality that there are some things we can't understand. We as elected officials can't understand what it's like to be called 
into a situation of emergency and to rush into that situation. We don't know what it's like to leave our families in the morning with our families knowing that we're going into a situation of danger because that's not our reality. There are things we simply can't understand in the line of work that you do. But we do know and we do appreciate that the work that you do gives us the foundation of democracy. It allows people to protest. It allows people to vote, which is the time of season that we're in now. And even in that time of season, I believe that in times of division, the vast majority of elected officials or those running for office appreciate your work and are grateful for your work. And what I say to other elected officials, and I will continue to say for as long as I hold office, any office, is that our responsibility, while we can't understand everything that you do, our responsibility is to say thank you to you, to remind others in the community to say thank you to you, to not second guess everything that happens when it comes to law enforcement, and to be grateful for the work that you do each and every day. So on behalf of the provincial government, on behalf of Premier Heather Stephenson, on behalf of all members of the Manitoba Legislative Assembly, thank you for what you do. Representing the City of Winnipeg, I welcome His Worship, Mayor Scott Gillingham, to deliver a message. Good morning, everyone. Your Honor, Lieutenant Governor Anita Neville, uh, Minister Gertzen, thank you for your comments as well. Today, uh, Assistant Commissioner Rob Hill, our Deputy Chief Art Standard, and Deputy Chief Scott Halley, distinguished guests, members of law enforcement, peace officers, friends. I'm honored to be here this morning at the annual Peace, uh, Police and Peace Officers National Memorial Day to honor those who have given their lives in the line of duty. And I come today on behalf of my City Council colleagues and on behalf of all uh, Winnipeggers. And I want to extend uh, my warmest welcome to each and every one of you who joined us for this very solemn but important and significant occasion. Thank you also, uh, Your Honor, for the Treaty Land Acknowledgement today. Today we gather to pay our respects to the brave men and women who in the line of duty have paid the ultimate sacrifice while selflessly serving their communities, our communities. Their stories inspire us, their stories remind us, their stories uh, encourage us to carry on their legacy and to ensure that their names and their memories live on forever and that their stories and their sacrifice is told from generation to generation. The weight of today's memorial is made all the more heavy with the news of the killing of Constable Rick O'Brien on Friday and Assistant Commissioner Hill on behalf of the people of Winnipeg, our sincere condolences to you and, uh, and your RCMP family. And so our presence today at this service honors Constable O'Brien's memory and the memory of all those who have paid the price he paid. And it shows our appreciation for the dedicated peace and police officers who work every day, every shift, to keep our communities safe and to uphold the laws that are foundational to our democracy. And to the families of those uh, loved ones who have fallen, I want to extend my deepest condolences and assure you that your, your loss is not born alone today. As a community, we stand with you, ready to provide support and comfort to all of you who have suffered the pain of losing a loved one, or to those who have uh, suffered alongside a family member who has been injured physically, emotionally, mentally, in the line of duty. To the police and peace officers in attendance today, on behalf of the City of Winnipeg, I want to express my sincere gratitude to you for your service and dedication, and to know that you are valued 
and the work that you do is appreciated. Your courage, your commitment to the safety and well-being of our community is greatly appreciated. In the face of real physical danger, in the face of voices in the community that may cry out otherwise and not truly appreciate the deep and important work that you do. And to the families who are standing behind each officer, thank you for the support that you provide and your service to our community by standing beside and behind the loved one that leaves your home every day to go to work. And so may the memories of those who have given their lives on the line of duty inspire us all as we continue our shared goal of keeping our community safe. Merci, miigwech, thank you. I would now like to call on behalf of the Manitoba Association of Chiefs of Police, President, Assistant Commissioner Rob Hill to say a few words. Your Honor, Mr. Gertson, Mayor Gillingham, Colleagues, honored guests, family and friends, thank you all for being with thank you all for being here with us today. This is an important and emotional day for many of us. It is a day of remembrance. A day to remember all who sacrificed their lives so that Manitobans and Canadians can live and raise their families in safety and security. This past year has seen so much tragedy. In fact, since we last gathered here in September of 2022, 11 police officers have died across Canada in the line of duty, with 10 of those officers having been murdered. I can't remember a time when I wore the morning ribbon so often, and you'll know that I'm wearing it once again as we lost Constable Rick O'Brien, 51 years old, just two days ago in Coquitlam after he was shot and killed in the line of duty. Police services across the country have experienced unimaginable loss this year. The 11 officers were from the RCMP, the OPP, Sûreté du Québec, Edmonton Police Service, South Simcoe Police Service, and the Toronto Police Service. These officers were mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters. They were loved by their community, by their friends, and by their colleagues. They died by doing what police do every day, responding to calls for help. But, as we know too well, these calls are never routine. There is always danger, and yet, these officers put aside their own personal safety for the protection of others and for the safety of their fellow citizens. They did this willingly because that is their calling to help and protect those in need. These 11 officers sacrificed their lives so that countless others can live safely. We are all here today because it is our duty to remember the 11 fallen officers as well as every single police and peace officer who's died in the line of duty in Manitoba and across Canada. We must always remember them. We must never forget their sacrifice. These are the heroes of our society. And as we mourn collectively and remember those who have fallen, we cannot forget that while we have lost colleagues, others have lost a loved one. To the families who are here with us today of fallen officers in Manitoba, thank you for your strength and courage. Please know that your loved ones live on through the collective memory of the peace officer community and the communities in which they served. Finally, to all police and peace officers here assembled today, thank you. I'm so very proud of our policing and peace officer community in Manitoba. It is always inspiring to me that no matter what color of the stripe or the patch on our shoulder, we work together and we support each other. Today is an example of that support and of our steadfast commitment to all who have lost their lives for the safety and security of Manitobans and Canadians. We shall never forget. Thank you, miigwech, akose, nakome. Representing the Office of President for the Manitoba Police Association, I welcome Mr. Ward Gordon to the podium.
Your Honor, Lieutenant Governor uh, Nita Neville, Honorable Minister of Justice Calvin Birdson, Your Worship Mayor Scott Gillingham, Manitoba Association Chiefs of Police President uh, Rob Hill, Assistant Commissioner Rob Hill, uh, Deputy Chief Halley, Deputy Chief Standard, uh, Deputy Chief Bowers, family and friends, especially those of our fallen. Good morning. I'd like to express, I'd like to start off by expressing how much of an honor it is to speak on behalf of the men and women of the Manitoba Police Association. We're here today on the solemn occasion to honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. We do this on the heels of yet another tragedy, another father, brother, husband, son, taken too soon. 2023 has proved to be one of the deadliest years for police and peace officers in Canada. These men and women who serve our communities bravely put themselves in harm's way to protect their fellow men and women. That bravery must be respected and must be honored. To the serving members present with us today and the members working at this moment across our fine province, I and the citizens of Manitoba are thankful you have taken the oath to protect and serve. I'm proud that we are holding this ceremony in front of the Manitoba Police and Peace Officers uh, Memorial. This is the first time we have honored the sacrifice of the 50 names on the back of that plaque uh, here since it was completed in June of 2021. I'd like to take a minute to recognize and thank uh, the province of Manitoba, the Winnipeg Police Association, and the Manitoba Government Employees Union for the financial sponsorship that made this memorial possible. I'd also like to take a second just to recognize uh, some of the members of the committee that made it possible as well. Uh, President Rob Belanger, Treasurer William White, Doug Roxborough, Patrick Lowe, Wayne Forrest, all of them and others worked tirelessly to ensure this project was completed. Before I part with you, I think it's important that we also acknowledge the sacrifices of our unsung heroes, our spouses, parents, children, and siblings. Without their unwavering support, we would not be able to withstand the physical and emotional demands that comes with serving the public. Finally, I'd like to thank the Manitoba Association of Chiefs of Police and Winnipeg Police Inspector Helen Peters for all the work that went into making uh, today's ceremony happen. To all the peace of police officers today and every day, henceforth, thank you for your dedication and Godspeed. I would now like to welcome Mr. Robert Belanger, President of the Manitoba Peace Officer Memorial Foundation to say a few words. Dignitaries, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am proud to be here today as the president of the Manitoba Peace Officer Memorial Foundation to welcome all of you on this inaugural unveiling of the combined firefighters, labor workers, and peace officer memorial. A place where families and friends of those who made the ultimate sacrifice and service of their community may come to reflect, remember, and honor the memories of their loved ones named in perpetuity. This has been a 17 year journey where our three groups came together as a tri party representing peace officers, firefighters, and labor groups. In conjunction with the province of Manitoba and many shareholders to whom we are eternally grateful, our combined efforts resulted in the memorial that you see before you today. Many years of fundraising, lobbying took place to assure that the site would be the perfect location to honor our fallen. It is important to mention that we would not be here today without the generous support from our sponsors, our shareholders, and unions who have wholeheartedly supported their members. The Government of Manitoba, the Winnipeg Police Association, and the Manitoba Government General Employees Unions were significant partners and without whom this memorial would not have been possible. 
From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for sharing our vision and your support. None of this would have been possible without the incredible dedication and effort put forward by members of the Manitoba Peace Officer Memorial Board who spearheaded this initiative to bring us where we are today. From a conversation on the back steps of the Manitoba Legislative Building after one memorial ceremony to the pedestal of this memorial before you today, their vision and determination to get this done has become a reality. The original board members include retired Jack Templeman, retired Winnipeg Police Service, William White, Manitoba Provincial Corrections, De La Riviere and Doug Zawada Correction Services of Canada, and retired Tom Sutcliffe, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. On behalf of myself and our board, thank you. And now we are pleased to share with you all the Winnipeg Police Service and Royal Canadian Mounted Police Pipes and Drums Band. CP Police and Peace Officers Memorial, we honor. From Northwest Mounted Police, Royal Northwest Mounted Police, and Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Constable George de Beaujeu, 
Corporal Harry Morphy, Assistant Surgeon Walter Flood, Sergeant Richard Nicholson, Constable Donald McDonald, Special Constable Norman Masson, Constable John Shaw, Constable Ronald Bloomfield, Constable Joseph Sander, Constable Joseph Thompson, Corporal Irvin Giesbert, Constable Thomas Carroll, Corporal George Hawkins, Sergeant James O'Malley, Constable Harold Siegel, Constable Dennis Onafray, Constable Bruce Davis, Special Constable Robert Thomas, Sergeant Malcolm Williams, Constable Peter Magdick, Constable Dennis Strongwell, Constable Alan D. Popst. From Stony Mountain Penitentiary, Correctional Officer Anton Flatby, Correctional Officer John Williams, Instructor Stanley Green, Living Unit Officer Werner Friesen, Living Unit Officer Joseph Wendell, from Vaughan Detention Center, Guard Edwin Pierce. From the Paw Correctional Center, Corrections Officer Rhonda Commodore. From Manitoba Provincial Police, Chief of Police Richard Power, Constable Charles Rook, Morality Officer Alex McCurdy, Morality Officer James Utley, from Benito, Manitoba, Constable William Wainwright. From Treehern, Manitoba, Constable John W. Clarkson. Manitoba Conservation Officers. Conservation Officer Charles Morish. Conservation Officer William McLeod. Conservation Officer Alan Assiniboine. Conservation Officer Robert C. Logan. Conservation Officer Keith M. Bartley. Conservation Officer Ken Squark. From Winnipeg Park Police, Constable David G. White. From St. Boniface Police, Sergeant John Vern. Constable Leonard Shakespeare. And from the Winnipeg Police Service, Constable John Beattie, Constable Bernard Snowden, Constable Charles Gillis M.M., Constable John McDonald, Detective Sergeant James E. Sims, and Detective Ronald Houston. Assistant Commissioner Rob Hill will lay a wreath on behalf of the Manitoba police and peace officers whose lives were taken while serving in the line of duty. For those who are able, please rise. Sergeant Mia Pierre Laflamme from the Royal Canadian Air Force Band will now play the last post, followed by a moment of silence, which will commence at the sound of three drum beats. After the moment of silence, you will hear our piper play the lament, followed by three more drum beats, at which point Reveille will be played. The last post and reveille are traditionally used to draw a symbolic association 
between the police and peace officers last duty <clears throat> their last duty and after a moment of silence their rise above their mortal duties
I would now like to call upon the chaplain once more to close with a blessing. Please remove headdress. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the lives of each and every police and peace officer serving across this great nation. We thank the families who continue to support those who serve and those who grieve the loss of their loved ones every day. We pray for wisdom and good judgment when there is hostility and for safety and protection when there is danger. We ask for your blessing, goodness, and favor. Now and always, amen. You may replace headdress. This concludes today's service. I would like to thank everyone for attending today's ceremony. In addition, I would like to thank the Manitoba Legislative and the City of Winnipeg staff for all their efforts in hosting this event. I ask you all now to remain standing for the departure of Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, the Honorable Anita Neville. Please remain standing for the drumming out of the Eagle Staffs. On behalf of the Manitoba Association of Chiefs of Police, and in fact all police and peace officers across Manitoba, I thank you for attending and wish you all a very pleasant afternoon. Please remain standing for the, dis the dismissal of the parade. Parade! Yes!